Many sacrificed everything, some even their lives, to serve God wholeheartedly during the greater part of the 1,260 years of the Little Horn Supremacy. This period started in AD 538, when Emperor Justinian gave the Bishop of Rome, represented by the Little Horn of Daniel 7, the formal role of head of Christendom and legal authority to kill what they would consider heretics. In some places, to read the Bible, or preach it, or even speak concerning it, was to incur the death penalty by the stake. To pray to God in secret, to refrain from bowing to an image, or to sing a psalm was also punishable with death. Even those who would abjure their errors were condemned, if men, to die by the sword, if women, to be buried alive. At one time, an entire family was brought before the inquisitors, charged with staying away from mass and worshiping at home. On his examination as to their practices in secret, the youngest son answered, We fall on our knees and pray that God may enlighten our minds and pardon our sins. We pray for our magistrates, that God may preserve them. Some of the judges were deeply moved, yet the father and one of his sons were condemned to the stake. The period ended in 1798, when Napoleon's general, Berthier, imprisoned the Pope, sending him to exile in captivity, thus inflicting a deadly wound. But the prophecy tells us that this deadly wound will be healed, and that religious observances, some not according to the Bible, will again be reinforced worldwide by the religious and civil powers. Those who decide to follow the Bible as it was written will be persecuted as radicals, extremists, fundamentalists, or fanatics. They will not be allowed to buy or sell and will be ordered to be killed. Imagine how life will be when you suddenly cannot pay your bills, mortgage, purchase groceries, or fuel your car. Life in society will be impracticable. How to stand firm and not capitulate before such threats? Learning how to live by faith now is an essential preparation to live by faith in the future. And God devised multiple ways to teach us this ability. For example, when you decide to become a tither and a promiser, you are apparently losing your purchase power. But by your acts, you are saying that you are willing to follow God's word, test him, and live by faith. After all, if God is not dependable, if his word is not true, if he is unable to provide for us, why serve him? As you return your tithe and promise, decide to learn how to live by faith now. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. May we put our desires last and God first.